Okay, it's July 6, 2015. I just took this trend trade on the one minute chart, wanting to get back above this high here, and Medium preferably a couple of ticks higher. I'll go ahead and tighten the stop up just a little bit now. It was a 10 tick initial stop, so this is gonna Medium this, line touch. This is gonna be one Shadow of those touch. short little 20, 30 tick, three to one, two to one uh, type trades. So I'm looking to get out right in here. I'm gonna go ahead and get out now. Order, order filled. There we go. Doesn't seem to be marking the exit quite correctly. I don't know why Ninja does that. It doesn't mark the exact time of the bars on the minute charts, but on the tick chart, no, it didn't either. It marked the entry correctly, but not the exit. So the exit was actually right here. Anyway, you just saw me exit it, so. 61 to 41, so I got 20 ticks out of it. So there was a two to one reward to risk. I just wanted to see a move back above this high. We have bullish divergence on the 30 minute, as you can see here. We have bullish divergence on the five minute, as you can see here. With a nice reversal pattern, we've got the climax followed by the churn bar, and then it turns up strong. I get in on that second pullback, missing the first one because I wasn't at my computer yet, and then that first pullback Median line touch. moves to the bottom of the, uh, the baseline here. So I could have gotten in a little bit earlier, but uh, we do get the climax, the weak climax into that baseline, and then it turns up off of it. So that's my initial signal to get in off of that area. Okay, of course I could have run the fibs, which I did on the 233 tick, and we have that confluence zone right there where it meets the baseline. Uh, where it meets the baseline on the one minute. So we got the 61 and the 38.2, which is typical for a little fourth wave. And then of course where I exited, we had that kind of explosion up into that high above this high running those stops. And we get that very high volume per second. Okay, and then of course there is bearish divergence on the tick chart with the uh, Chaikin oscillator. So this is not my typical huge trade that I'm looking for, but I'm sure a lot of you are looking to kind of fine tune some of your trend trades or some of your smaller, you know, two to one, three to one reward to risk trades. Uh, and that's how you would do it. So this is just one example of taking a, a simple little trend trade, but fine tuning and, and knowing exactly where the end of this correction is going to happen. Okay, you've got the previous high, you've got the Fib Confluence Zone, you've got the baseline on the one minute, which I'll show you now. Low to low, and then it comes back down to it perfectly right there. Like I said, it's the Fib Confluence as well, it's the previous high, and then we're looking for a break of this high, which we do get. We actually have volume divergence as well which we get the signal out of Bloodhound for. Okay, here it's been building a little bit of a base. So, just to show you. Order pending. This could be a potential buy here. Order pending. I'll do it with a four tick stop. If it Order comes back. Filled. Okay, it filled me. So I've got a four tick stop and I'm looking to break this high. So let's see how this works. Let's look at the tick chart first. Okay, there's that push that we needed to see. Yeah, okay, there we go. Median line touch. Okay, so I'm gonna get out. There's a churn bar. We're breaking the new highs. I've got about a three to one risk. Good line touch. Reward to risk. I'm gonna get order, out. Order, right order canceled. Okay. Good, so I made. 57 to 70, 13 ticks. And I risked four. And you see how that volume helped me get out? So we've got the climax, the weak climax churn, weak climax churn, that dark magenta's weak climax churn. It's both a climax and a churn bar, followed by a churn bar. And I got out one tick from the high. Oh, three, I guess it went to 71. Anyway, I hit market, I should have had a limit order. 
sitting up there, but that's all I wanted to see. I just wanted to see a break of that high. So this could potentially be a, a nice short here. Nice little uh, three to one reward to risk there. So acceptable, not my typical trades, but uh, just wanted to give a kind of example of how you can use this to better manage um, these little short trend trade bursts. And by the way, on this one minute chart, this is not the relative volume. I'm looking at the true volume, but I have all of the same conditions for the relative volume built into this. So I still have the spikes and I still have uh, the kind of volume spread analysis signals. The, the climax churn bars, the climax bars, the weak signals, and uh, the churn bars. Okay, so those are all built into this as well. If we were to look at this with the relative volume, this is what it would look like here. So we still have the churn bar. Of course, I have the density behind it. And this is still a weak climax bar. A lot of the signals will be the same on a one-minute chart, but I just kind of like to see the true volume on the one-minute uh, anyhow, but uh, when you start getting into the five minute and higher, then you really start getting a, a big difference between the true volume and the relative volume, especially uh, when you start getting up into the 15 and 30 minute, then the, the standard volume analysis becomes pretty much uh, useless and the relative volume is really just essential Baseline on those touch. larger charts. So you can see here on the 233 tick, we had three weak churn bars in a row coming up into that high as we were breaking this previous high. And then finally on that last up bar, we did have a spike in the volume per second, as you see that black bar behind it, uh, but it wasn't above the fourth standard deviation as these pink Based bars are. Touch. Okay, and that was obviously a perfect exit, would have been a good uh, entry as well, as we have these three stabs to a high. Uh, that last bar was a very narrow range bar, uh, very high volume per range, and was obviously very overbought on the Chaikin oscillator, which uses volume to uh, calculate the movement of the oscillator. All right, so just wanted to make this little video to show you how you can better use uh, these indicators to help you with your trend trading.